Welcome to another episode of the Endless Possibilities podcast. Today our host Garrett sits down with the remarkable Elizabeth Rose, a clear trance channeler. She communicates divine guidance from spiritual entities, including God, Christ and angels. In this enlightening conversation they delve into the depths of Elizabeth's spiritual journey. They explore her channeling work discussing the profound healing processes she facilitates. Elizabeth is not just a spiritual guide, she's a beacon of hope connecting with higher energies to foster spiritual growth. Witness a live healing and channeling demonstration where Elizabeth emphasizes the importance of releasing negative emotions. It's a journey of self-discovery and transformation, a testament to the power of positivity and the human spirit. As this episode reaches its conclusion, Garrett and Elizabeth share words of gratitude. They encourage an embrace of positivity and self-healing. It's a call to uplift not just ourselves, but those around us. Join us in this exploration of spirituality, channeling, and healing. Discover the endless possibilities that lie within you. This is more than a podcast. It's a journey towards self-realization. Embrace the journey and find your peace. Hello, and welcome to the Endless Possibilities podcast. My name is Garrett, and today we have a very special guest back for the second time. It's Elizabeth Rose. We interviewed Elizabeth last year. And if you want to find out more about Elizabeth's story, you can go back to that one. I'll put a link down below. So I'm going to just give her a quick little introduction for those who, who might have missed that first one. So Elizabeth is a clear trans channel amongst a lot of other things. Right. But I, I'll just stick to that for today's many of you have heard of mediums okay who channel messages from deceased loved ones elizabeth is more like the medium played by whoopi goldberg in the movie ghost but she's a cheer a clear channel deep trance channel of divine guidance from god christ seraphim the archangels the angels the ascended masters and sometimes deceased loved ones all step in and move her, move her body in different ways in order to heal, transmit healing energies and speak through her. So we're going to have a fabulous chat with Elizabeth and hopefully she can do a demonstration of how our healings work. Elizabeth, welcome back. Good to see you. Hi, Gareth. Thank you for having me back. It's so great to see you. Yeah. So how have you been? I hope you've been keeping well. I've been good. Really busy. It's been crazy busy for me. A lot of life changes. Yeah. Someone in my life has moved in and he's turning this little cottage, the Rose Cottage, into a paradise. It is exquisite. It's beautiful. And that's been morning, noon and night. And it's been great. And life yeah. is good. And your work. I, I mean... So many people I connect with, they find their way to you. Uh, and I hear, I'm always hearing back that people have great results and they're always so happy after doing sessions with you. So I'm happy to to get you back today and hopefully we can do a little demonstration of how you work. And then we'll talk all about like the, the, the beings and God and Christ and how they work through you and what their roles are and what they do. So how does that sound? Oh, that sounds good, Gareth. It's it was unexpected, all of this, but it is interesting. I find it interesting. <laughs> After ten years now, I still find this work fascinating, and it's a lot that comes through is very unexpected. And it is really fascinating. And 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 for those who haven't seen Elizabeth in action before, it's something else. It really is. So I'm very excited that we could do a little demonstration. Is there anything you'd like to talk about before we do the demonstration first or anything you'd like to explain? Well, I guess they can hear everything in the podcast, but I guess the focus of my work or the channeling is actually healing. Messages mm -hmm. come through, but the focus is to heal people from within so that their outer reality starts to change, starts to improve. And I find the angels are focused on releasing the negative emotions, anger being the heaviest emotion. And they explained to me that emotions are of the earth and they're going to release the emotions to assist everybody in lightening up. 
and becoming lighter, shining brighter, and moving up to higher and higher levels of consciousness. And that is their number one goal. It's actually healing of the soul. And I've come to understand what I do over time as different clients have asked questions and the answers came, you know, from above. And yeah, it's been interesting. Mm. And I think I did about seven or eight sessions with you a little bit, and they've always been so different and the messages have been amazing. But I, the one thing I always took away from them was that no matter what the messages were, it was like there was a healing going on, right? The healing was the most important part of it. Even though the messages are so incredible, right? That what moves through and the angels they, they connect with. So yeah, so very happy. Yeah, would you like to start? Maybe you can just do a general message and a healing for those watching for a little sure. bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and for anybody watching, I would just suggest that they can tune in. The angels explain that everybody points to God. And so how they healed me and trained me was hours, weeks, months of going into a deep meditative state by going up to the light. I'm a hypnotist. I can guide people on lovely guided visualizations down a garden path, up the mountains. But the angels say, just go up to God over and over again. So I would suggest that anybody watching just relax and close their eyes and move their awareness to the light that shines in all moments. It's like a spotlight shining on us all the time and it's the light of god and it's also one of the things that the angels are focused on is clearing your channel so that you become a channel and a lot of clients and you you know many of them have become channels and some of them professional channels by mm -hmm. continually going up to the light and as you're going up the angels are clearing and releasing the blocks the negative energies any stumbling blocks, recurring patterns in terms of their thinking. They're just releasing heavy energies. So with that in mind, just everybody can just close their eyes, relax, and picture that light and just see themselves floating up. I always think of a puffy white cloud that conforms perfectly to your body and you begin to move up. And the higher you rise, the lighter you begin to feel and the brighter you shine. And that's the mantra that Christ gave me in a past life regression that they facilitated. And Christ just said higher and higher, feeling lighter and lighter, glowing brighter and moving up to the light of God, letting go and just relaxing and going deeper and deeper into the experience. As you go higher, you feel lighter and glow brighter and you become more open to the higher wisdom and awareness. So with that in mind, I'll say a prayer. I always say a prayer. Dear Wonderful. God on high, light of God, Yeshua, high angels, archangels, angels, divine specialists, I uh, ask to be a channel of healing, clearing, and heightened awareness for everyone's highest good, everyone who's tuning in, and everyone that is connected to them. Work through me to heal them at all levels, however they need to be healed, cleared, or made aware for their highest good. All who come in light and love are welcome. Amen. 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 Yeshua, the light is expanding. The healing energies are expanding. The high energies are expanding in the energy of awe. The light is becoming more of all that it is, and everyone is becoming more of all that they are. The light will continue to expand. We are assisting in raising the vibrational frequency of all, healing the energy of all, clearing, opening, expanding the high energies. Healing energy comes in through each crown chakra, in through each third eye chakra, opening each throat and heart chakra, High energies are expanding. The high energies are expanding and will expand increasingly. High energies are becoming more expanded. The light is expanding. The healing energies are expanding. We are releasing negative energy from all who are interested in moving beyond the level they are at. We are healing the energy of all who are 
interested in moving forward without that which they have held on to through lifetimes of negative experiences. Anger is an energy we are clearing. We are releasing. We are healing, connecting, 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 opening, 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 expanding. Can I? Am I able to? Can I? Am I able to? Can I? Am I able to? Am I able to? Can I? Can I? Can I? We are clearing negative energy from the energy of all who have experienced negative emotions. Cannot. I cannot. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Angry. We are clearing. Angry. We are releasing. Angry. We are opening each heart chakra. Healing energies are expanding. Hi. Energies are expanding. New energies are expanding. Each is at a higher level. Each is at a higher frequency and is becoming more expanded. We are healing the energy of all who are interested in this work. The light is expanding. The healing energy is expanding. The high energies are expanding. The light is becoming more of all that it is. The high energies are expanding. Healing energies are expanding. Connecting, integrating high energy into the energy of all. Worry, worry, worry. We are clearing worry, worry, angry. We are clearing, opening, expanding. New energies are expanding. Healing energies are expanding. The light is expanding. Yeshua, fear not. There is apprehension, worry, fear in the world. Unlike other times, there is more in this time. Be of the light. Be of the light. Be of the light in the world. Fear not. Fear nothing. Blessings. Amen. Okay, so that's a very brief <laughs> moment mm -hmm. of channeling and so i think out of that you probably heard a lot of healing and a few messages on how to move forward and could feel it is that to Did me is it, the most Gareth? important of course it really comes in beautiful really beautiful so okay so i guess i get okay so I worked with you, Elizabeth, right? I did a number of session with you, sessions with you. And I noticed after, I don't know, a couple of sessions, I started to get stuff coming in for me, right? That it wasn't normal for me. I remember after one session, almost having a voice speak to me and like call out things, right? It was like Apple. And then I'd say Apple. And it was almost like I'd get a, like a little green tick. And then it would say tennis ball. And it was almost like they were testing the channel to see if I could receive the messages, right? I was getting these little ticks. So I guess what happens if people work with you, stuff like this can open up for them, right? The, the, these abilities. Absolutely. They're working to turn everybody into a channel and they are working hard as you're, you are working to get up there and to connect. They're working to pull you up, to clear your channel so that you can have direct communication to uh, higher guidance to your guides to god to christ to the angels and uh, whoever you're meant to connect with will come through it does take work though but mm -hmm. as you notice it's a process and everyone has their own process but that's what they were doing not only were they testing it they were training you they were they will guide you they instruct you i've had many clients where they have just received lectures on how to get up there or what they have to let go of in order to get up to the light. It's interesting because there's so much love coming forward. There's absolutely nothing but love. There are instructions and sometimes those sound a little stern, <laughs> but it all is with love. Uh, I'm always amazed. People in the world feel all these negative emotions. We feel guilty. We feel ashamed. We feel stupid or whatever it is. There is no criticism in the light. There is only higher guidance and this constant pulling up. Did you notice you feel yourself moving up a little bit when you're, that's yeah. what I find. Yeah. My, my totally. scalp. Yeah. Starts almost. to be lifted. My, yeah. 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 Like my, my I can totally feel that. Yeah, and they're literally pulling your energy body up. And I think your physical body sort of follows with that. I see a lot of people will be like this, you know, at the end of a session. And everyone has a different experience. But they're working to clear your channel so you can connect and hear or sense or feel, depending on what your primary modality is. Not everybody yeah. hears, not everybody sees. 
some people taste their way through life, but whatever that modality you use or rely on is, they're going to heighten it. Yeah, because I work with energy, right? Everything when I because I do similar to you, I work in sessions with people like transmitting these energies, right? But I don't get information. I don't get visuals. I mean, it's happened. And funny, you know, shortly after working with you a couple of times, I did have stuff open up. I, I you know, I had visuals open up, which was very new for me. So I guess I, I have some questions and the beings, right? Christ or Jesus, what's his goal, right? Why does he come true? He's the one that kind of He's, wants to come true a lot. Yeah, years, like in 2001, I became quite psychic. And the first guide I saw was Buddha, but he didn't say anything. He just looked at me. I looked at him. He looked at me and I thought, is that Buddha? Like, I think it is. I don't know. So I was very uncertain and I was very psychic. I didn't necessarily hear anything. And it wasn't until Palm Sunday, 2012, when I was taking a past life regression course that Jesus appeared and he was larger than life, more real than you and me. And he was like, wham, right there. He was uh, what you would think an ascended master would look like, but just pure light, like a light bulb, flowing robes, flowing white beard, white hair, white glowing robes. Later, as I was, as the angels, and actually I, was, I had a, a really good hypnosis instructor who regressed me back to different times with Jesus, Yeshua, the man, and he looked completely different. He looked like what you might expect him to look like yeah. in many pictures yeah. and paintings, kind of like that, you know? So the ascended version of him was just breathtaking. I was, I was in tears. I was trembling and shaking and and he had, he said I had failed him and I, he didn't specify as to how, but I can think of thousands of ways I failed Jesus because I didn't follow Christianity until Jesus. I left Christianity when I was in high school. And then when Jesus recruited me <laughs> in 2012, I, I followed him. I wouldn't call it religion. I would call it spirituality and following Christ but also following God and following the angels. And it seems to me, because I'm, I was sort of raised in an Anglican household, Baptist household, and there's not a lot of talk about angels. There's no, virtually no discussion of angels except for at Christmas time and things like that. So mm. the reality that I now experience wasn't part of my awareness from the Bible that was taught when I was younger. So yeah, it, it took me a while to find my experience in the biblical work. And it was actually Dr. Michael Heiser, who's written a lot. He's since passed, unfortunately, but I reached out to him. He was a wonderful man. And his, he was going between the lines. He did a lot of research. He was a biblical scholar who really explained my experiences in a lot of his work. We didn't have a lot of yeah. conversations, but yeah, I did find it sort of added up. The Unseen World, that's a really good book. The Unseen Realm or The Unseen World, that's one of his books. Yeah. Funny, I think you told me about them books a while ago, and I, I think I, I downloaded some of them. Yeah. So, so just to get back to, to, to Jesus, right? He seems to be quite stern. Right. He doesn't take any messing. He told you you had failed him. And I, I have a friend who has a relationship with Jesus. He turns up and teaches her and he she reports the very same. Like he'll tell her if she's done wrong or he'll tell her she needs to do this. He'll wake her up in the middle of the night by shouting and saying, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. And I know you've had them experiences. I know your story about how they pushed your head down into your breakfast one morning and told you to be reverent and all of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, what, what, can you tell me what that's about? Like, why is he so stern? Like, what's... Wh well... Like, okay, what I'm getting at is, like, what's his role? Like, what's his role and why... How does he... What's his role? And, like, is he somehow kind of governing our earth and has a say in it and wants to teach teachers and train them. Yes. Yeah. And and I will say he is stern when he has to be. 
Yeah. And he is also very funny, unexpectedly hilarious. And okay. then he, if he needs to push you, he will push you forward. The whole thing is to push you forward. Sorry, someone's doing some work out there. There, the whole I you can't hear it. Good. No. Nope. So he's his role is to teach the world to love unconditionally, non-judgmentally, and eternally. And until we learn that lesson, then we will have the same teacher, Christ, and, and many ascended masters. Something interesting happened to me when I was in 2012, when Jesus first appeared, and my hypnosis instructor was very interested. So he kept regressing me back. I was very interested. So we kept going back to the time of Jesus. And my hypnosis instructor would ask a lot of questions and one of the he asked what about buddhism what about you know all these other religions and jesus appeared to me and he showed me his hand with his jesus robe and a, a wedding band by the way and a tibetan buddhist blessing knot on his left hand and i could see the sort of frayed robe with little tiny sort of earthy red pinstripes and sort of a linen-y kind of a off-white color but it was Jesus hand it was very clear to me and he said Elizabeth it was all me Buddhism was all me and I've since learned that he's had many incarnations on his path towards being an ascended master to being Christ whatever Christ is but it's about love and it's about teaching the world love and until we get it, then we're going to keep reincarnating, coming back to the earth to learn the lessons and so on. Yeah, he's stern when you don't get it. <laughs> I, I, was on, I was in the corporate world when yeah. he appeared. I was still trying to get back to the corporate world. I was a chartered investment manager. I had a 25-year career. All I wanted to do was get back into the corporate world, but I had taken a hiatus. After losing one job, I started to do take a lot of courses in hypnosis and energy healing, spiritual healing. And, and then Jesus appeared. And so going back a ways, when I was, I just turned 50 and not, well, I was quite psychic at the time, but Jesus wasn't on my radar screen. I was studying Buddhism. And I was very dedicated to it. For seven years, I studied Tibetan Buddhism. And I did all the mantras and the prostrations and all the things you have to do to alleviate suffering as Buddha taught. And around that time, I had a really traumatic event. I had seen a vision of my own funeral. And then I, had, I almost died in a situation and then in two, that was maybe 2013, 12 or 13. No, what am I saying? 2010 or 11. And then in 2007, I was sort of mourning that I didn't stay where I had been and I didn't stay in the relationship I was in. And Jesus said, Elizabeth, you'd be dead. I'm like, what? Because, yeah, if you hadn't stepped on the spiritual path, you'd be dead. So, wow. So, if you don't accomplish your mission, I learned through experience, then you may not live that much longer. And I know we have different exit strategies in our lifetimes, mm -hmm. but I found out then that all the trauma I experienced back in 2011, 10, 11, was, I was either going to fail or succeed. And I didn't even know I had a spiritual mission. I didn't even know. I kept seeing visions of a path, a path, like I'd see trees in a path and I'd see trees with spirits in them in a path. And I thought, oh, I have to get on the path back to nature. No, he just meant get on the spiritual path because I was seeing spirits in all these trees. It, it was hard for me to understand all the visuals. So when I became a trans channel, then they start, I could hear okay. them. So the communication yeah. change from being cryptic yeah. images to clear instructions. Finally, yeah, I understood what was being said and the messages, yeah. and it was just so much easier. Yeah, they made it very Elizabeth, easy for me. 
Can I ask a question? Why some people get the cryptic visions, right? Like they get these, so, and, and and that's how it used to be for me. And I never really, I did. I mean, I did sometimes, right? I did hear voices coming in, but I mean, why can't they just do that to be, you know, why has it got to be so cryptic? And that's a really good question. And why is life so hard? Like, I. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh -huh. what, like, OK, so, for instance, say if they want to get a message to you and you're just not listening and they're sending you, you know, maybe you're meditating and you're getting all these visions, but you could spend quite a lot of time getting it wrong. Right. You, you know, like you just the path was there, the spirits, the path, whereas they could just say, is it something to do with our own free will? They don't want to get too involved or, or you know, why did it come yeah. later that they they started giving clear instructions? You have to ask. That's something I learned later on, too. Why isn't everybody awakened, enlightened? Why? Because we have to ask. We have to work for it. And there's all this karma from previous lifetimes. And there's all these hurts, wounds, and traumas that we have to heal. And mm. we are slowly moving forward or quickly moving forward, depending on how much work we're doing. It's been a case of, you know, I, I should just channel it and see what they have to say, if that helps. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. have my own ideas. Okay. Okay. Dear God on high, light of God, Yeshua, high angels, archangels, angels, divine specialists, I ask to be a channel of higher guidance. Can you explain why is it that spiritual gifts develop slowly? in our experience, very slowly or gradually and become more heightened over time. What is the process? All who come in light and love are welcome. Amen. 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 You are a high energy. You are a high frequency and are unable to understand all that you are. You assume you all have assumptions about all that is. It is an opportunity for you to become more of all that you are without the assumptions in the world. The world is not as you expect it to be. The physical world is unable to be as you expect it to be. The world is not as you imagine it is. It is not. Understand, you are a high energy. You are a high frequency and are unable to understand all that you are until you become more increasingly aware. You will remain in the world, in the physical world, unable to connect, unable to understand, unable, unable. We are assisting in expediting everyone on their path, assisting in releasing the apprehension, the worry, the fear of being in the light, fear of being in the energy field, fear of what might unfold in the energy field. The fear is the energy each has held on to. It is not easy to let go of the fear. It is not easy to understand the energy. It is not easy to comprehend anything in the energy field. Fear not, fear nothing. Let go your worries. Allow all to unfold without worry, without fear. Be aware of what is important. What is important? It is important to become more increasingly uh, ascendant more increasingly a higher energy, a higher frequency, a higher vibrational energy, become more increasingly of love. Love. Love is an energy. Love is a high energy. It is the energy you're able to do. What do? Do. In the world and in the energy field, be a high energy, be a high frequency. Understand you are able to move to higher and higher levels to higher and higher frequency. It's becoming more expanded as an energy being. You are moving away from the physical. It is a process, it is an opportunity to enter into the energy field without worry, without fear. Appreciate, appreciate all. Appreciate and understand how important everything is, how beneficial every one is. There are opportunities in the physical world you are unable to understand. There are opportunities in the physical world you must experience before you move into the energy field. Do you understand? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, so they're saying a lot of us have to stay in the physical world to learn our lessons, to get our experiences that we need to acquire. 
and mm. to stop the cycle of reincarnation or heal from it or do that before we can actually get into the spiritual world. What did they, the energy field, they call it, but there's a lot of fear blocking most of us. It, it, indeed, when I learned to astral travel, it was fear that stopped me from actually astral traveling for months. And then finally at the Monroe Institute, it was intensive. I really focused. I finally got out there, but it was my own fear. And once I got out there, I was still fearful and I was manifesting fearful situations. <laughs> so thoughts are things and we are powerful creators and we are creating reality in every moment. We just don't understand that. So if we live in a fearful way, then the universe provi provides opportunities to be afraid. <laughs> yeah. And so that expands. And so jumping into the spirit world is very terrifying for a lot of people. And that yeah, blocks them. And, yeah. So, so in Bob Monroe's early books, he, when he starts going out of body, he's met by an awful lot of fearful situations. And later on in the books, he kind of re reveals that a lot of the stuff he manifested was just his own fear. It was, you know, he was manifesting it for himself and all of these obstacles and blocks and a lot of the beings that he was coming across, they were just him. It was just, he was just experiencing his own fear. So, so I guess what's coming true in that message is that if we progress too fast and haven't worked through a lot of the fear, then we'll just be met by fearful uh, situations in the non-physical and spiritual world right and um, in the physical okay. world yeah physical, like we're manifesting all the time attracting yeah. the wrong partners or attracting the wrong work situations attracting unhappy situations i i it, it takes two to tango i mean certainly it's not just us but yeah. we're part of that big soup of emotion and experiences so we're manifesting look at the media on television <laughs> we're part of that we're tuned into the media well now our consciousness is blended into all of that so yeah as we we create as we feel we create as we think as we feel and then it manifests it's a bit slow in the physical world it's very slow thankfully otherwise yeah. it'd be really scary but yeah. Once you let go of your fears and once you heal emotionally, and I mean, there's more ways than just going into a meditative state to heal. Uh, psycho you know, so many great psychology protocols and uh, all kinds of modalities that work, but meditation has, is my favorite. It's, it's mm. meditating and connecting with higher guidance. It has healed uh, uh, so much, a, a lot. I won't say everything, but a lot. OK, so we'll, we'll get to it healing in a little bit. Just uh, OK, so the angels, Jesus. So how do, how does that look? What does that look like? Do they work as a team? Right. So I'm trying to I'm trying to paint a picture for people and myself included. Right. Of like, where do these beings reside? Right. And how like when do they take notice of us? Like, and what does that look like? You know, is it like a little, a little light goes off, you know, all of a sudden someone's on their spiritual path, does a, a little bell ring that they go, okay, you know, Jane is down here. She started her spiritual path. We now can, you know, bring energies in or try and help. How, how does that look? And what's going on in the non-physical behind the well, scenes? The angels know everything. <laughs> They're aware at all times, in all moments. And it's really busy. The, the few times that I've been in the non-physical realm, and I, I can't tell me, you know, go back to the Monroe Institute. Thomas Campbell said all experiences are given. And as far as I can tell, I agree with that because everything was a lesson, was a teaching. All my paranormal experiences, they were actually lessons. I didn't know it at the time. They were quite mm -hmm. shocking, a lot of them. But I have been... I remember waking up at midnight, sitting at the end of my bed, and I, it was like my head was pushing through a sea, uh, floor, and it was just solid angels, like just their robes, you know, just really busy, you know, angel central busy. And I was waiting for somebody to connect or look down. No, and they were 
enormous, just enormous. I didn't see anything but robes, you know, and they're brushing over my face and around. And, and so angels are always present, ever present. They say that we are ever present and ever aware, always. And so we, in this human world, think we're alone in this isolation body of uh, isolation tank called the human body or meat suit, whatever you want to call it. But we feel very isolated. As soon as we move from the physical world into the non-physical world, we become aware that everybody can see and sense and feel everything about you. They can see your whole history. They can, they know there's a knowing that happens. And so angels are all knowing God, Christ, the angels are all knowing all ever present, ever aware. So what we have to learn to do or what we can learn to do, it's an opportunity. Everything is to connect to the angels that are ass assisting us. Now I've seen the first ones were nine angels in a, a choir of angels. My friend said, that's a choir of angels. I saw them and they were four, three, and two. I could just see them right up here. And then, then 19 angels came here. They arrived at the cottage when I moved here from Toronto they appeared and that's when they took over my life and said, you can only heal others to the level at which you yourself are healed. We're going to heal you so you can heal all. And that again was a lesson. They appeared. So I knew who they were. They were angels. And that message was, you've got to heal before you can help other people. And things like abandonment, boundaries, those things have healed over the years my friend Krista and I get together once a year and ask for our marching orders. And it's like every year there's a new thing we have to work on. And then once we heal that, then suddenly clients come that had the same issues or have the same issues that have to be healed. It's been interesting. As soon as I heal mm -hmm. from something, then suddenly all my clients have that. And or the clients that appear have those issues, and then the angels are releasing all of that. So it's interesting how they appear to me. They've appeared in so many different ways. But one thing that happened early on when I was taking hypnosis, um, Jesus kind of took over my, my sessions. There are certain protocols. And Michael Newton has written many protocols on the life between lifetimes, the afterlife, and oh gosh, there, there's different pro protocols. And the poor student that was trying to regress me or take me into the life between lifetime protocols was frustrated because Jesus would just sh show up and take over. And then one time he had me up on a platform and there were all these ancient beings. Well, I thought they were stones. And then I gradually realized they were there were eyes and they were all looking at me like standing stones. And one of them was actually Merlin. I was thinking it looks like Merlin. And then it was a telepathic message. And it was telling me I wasn't on track. Like I, I needed to step up. I like, how? Who's, who's, Mer no who's Merlin? I mean, Merlin well, is Merlin, like a magician or? The wizard, wizard. in the, the tales of King Arthur, he appeared exactly like that. And he, he was just telepathically telling me what I needed to do. I was afraid of demonstrating my spiritual gifts. I was afraid of being laughed at or revealing some of my spiritual gifts in the corporate world. He said, mm. no, no more. You have to be yourself. This is who you are. You've got to be you. You're a spiritual being having a human experience, but it, you're moving from that human experience to becoming the spiritual being, more of the spiritual being that you are. So I got a bit of a telepathic lecture in that moment. I couldn't really focus on anyone but him, but he was there. And then many times with Christ, first like as that ascended master, and then past lives, sitting, talking, walking, experiencing him teaching, and different moments, even his crucifixion, just moments, you know, you get that most most traumatic moment or that highest teaching moment in, in these regressions. Yeah. yeah. But I've seen angels on the astral plane. I've been shown. I saw them pulling souls out of human bodies and 
wings, people talk about wings. And I just saw these big, huge fountains of light with what looked like human forms attached to them. And as I thought it was a fountain. And then as I got closer, I saw, oh, it's an angel. That's what the wings are. It was pure light. And these beautiful angelic beings were just lifting souls off. The souls were just peacefully floating up, up somewhere. I didn't know where they were going. I saw that. I was shown that three times. So I got the picture. It was pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Maybe you could give me some sort of a structure of like God and the archangels and the angels and seraphim. How does that work? Right. What's that structure? And I, okay. And another thing is like, so why do all these different ones come in and do they like, do they have different qualities and different attributes and different healing abilities? So maybe you could give me a little bit on that. Yeah. Well, that's why my prayer includes dear God, yeah. Christ. And then I get yeah. to divine specialists, whoever they are, like they could be a sense of So if, okay. for example, years ago, I was, the angels told me I had needed to do Kundalini yoga because that was the yoga of the ascension. And it's all part of this process. And they changed my diet. They did all this stuff. And I don't know if I mentioned it in the last podcast, but I was doing this very interesting thing where my head was doing figure eights and then my whole body was doing figure eights. And I heard ear to the floor till you can't know more ear to the sky till it's way too high. And I went, who's this? And I heard Maharishi. <laughs> Did I tell you that story? I don't know if you said th th this one. No, but I, I remember. you. Okay. Go ahead. Though. Yeah, this is fascinating. Yeah, so, and I asked, is this Maharishi who worked with the Beatles, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and so on. And he said, yes, Elizabeth, like the grin from ear to ear, like just big grin. And I said, do you mind me asking about that situation? Because he had been interested in John, John Lennon's wife. And I guess John Lennon left in a huff. He was upset and thought he dismissed the whole thing at that point. And I said, do you mind me asking him about that? He said, I have issues. Don't you have issues? And I thought, yeah, I do. <laughs> so this morning I was doing yoga. I was channeling yoga. And someone said, I am here. And I said, is it Jesus? And I said, is it, oh, I can't, Baba Ganda or something. And I, I said, is it Maharishi? Yes, Elizabeth. <laughs> so he's still working with me to move me into yoga poses. And it's interesting because the energy is so abrupt now. It used to be very slow and kind of weak and flowing. Now it's like, oh, you know, like just, oh, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, well maybe funny. you can pass it. You can pass a message on to them because a lot of the people who actually are our viewers of this YouTube channel and the, the podcast, a lot of them are TM people. They've come from that background. So maybe that's why he came in this morning. Oh, There's a lot yeah, of them. That, There's a lot of I them. I hadn't talked. Yeah. I don't think I talked to him much since that first time that he, you know, introduced him or I asked who it was. I can ask him to come forward. Sure. Would if you'd like, like to. to yes. He, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Dear God on high light of God, Yeshua, high angels, archangels. Is it beneficial? Is it possible? for the Maharishi to step forward and uh, say uh, a few words for the highest good of all. All who come in light and love are welcome. Amen. 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 Yes. Find, find, find everything in the world. Find everything in the world. There is everything in the world you are able to do to understand everything in the energy field, find everything, everything in the physical world, and then move into the higher energies. Before you enter into the higher energies, it is important to understand the world and to be a high energy in the world, to do all that you're able to do without the apprehension. The world isn't as you expected it to be, Nothing is, nothing will be as you expect it to be. Understand what is important 
understand what is important for you. Be who you are. Do what you're interested in doing. Go forward. Go forward without the apprehension you have held on to. Fear doesn't serve anybody in the world. There is an energy, a high energy expanding, and there is a negative energy expanding. Be the high energy. Let go of the negative energy. The negative energy will expand. You are able to move beyond that negative energy and be in the world without the worry, without the fear. Have an understanding of what is important for you. Don't understand any but your own self. Understand your own self, who you are as a high energy, as a high frequency. Worry less about everything else and be in a peaceful state. Peace is more important than anyone understands. Just fear nothing. Don't worry. Everything is all right. Everything will be okay. It is all for everyone to understand more, to become more aware. The world is an opportunity to understand everything, everything that is important. Don't worry. Don't worry. Fear. Fear is an energy. Fear is a negative energy. Fear is unable to do as it wants to do if you do as you're interested in doing without it. Without fear, everything will be okay again. <clears throat> Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so I guess that was the Maharishi. And it sounds like he's been around the Beatles because <laughs> there's a few little things he said that were like little snippets from Beatles songs. Really? <laughs> That's funny. Honestly, yeah, I was listening. There was a couple of little things you said. It was like, I was like, okay, fascinating, fascinating, really fascinating. Yeah, so so he so he's still hanging around, looking to come true and get messages, to to help people. Well, he helps me do yoga, and I've never asked him to come forward. Well, there was a gentleman who studied with him in Vancouver, I think, what who was from Vancouver, and I seemed to recall he came through for that gentleman. That was a few years ago, but he hasn't come through since, except to move me into yoga poses so i've never asked him for anything since that time <laughs> so it's interesting yeah and i mean who else has come true or like like did it i mean okay just to give you a little a, a few years ago when i shifted into unity consciousness it was almost like the boundaries that kept my consciousness within right sort of came down and I merged out into the collective. And what happened after that was, it was almost like I could perceive beings, right? I could actually feel if something came in and, and passed through my room, I'd be like, oh, there's something here. And I could ask questions and stuff. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and I, I was telling them about this. I was having people who had passed on were turning up and they were looking to get messages to, to loved ones. And I mean, it was I ha it was quite interesting. I didn't pursue it any further. You know, I just thought, what? Well, how do I approach these people and say, you know, such and such who died a couple of months ago, they're not actually dead. They've turned up. They're trying to give me this message to give to you. So, like, what? Like, who's turning up? And like, for how long do they hang around before they incarnate into a, another life? Or, yeah. Well, everybody's different. So yeah. some of my clients have asked me to channel to see if deceased loved ones are okay. One of my clients and friends is a reverend. And so he does a lot of funerals and weddings. And he's I've channeled for him to see how they are on the other side or as they're preparing to move, to transition, you know, what needs to be done or said. And sometimes people get stuck and it's like they get stuck in an emotion or in a belief system where there was one gentleman, I can't remember the situation, but he had passed. It was somebody's father and the Reverend had said, you know, can you just check on him? And I don't check. I just ask God, Christ and the angels to help there. And so 
he was kind of curled up and, and afraid to move. One of the really interesting, ex well, some interesting experiences I had was with a, a client who was a corrections officer. And when she was learning, she was coming for full immersion into spirit, which is kind of what I do online now. But she, I used to do it for days and days. And so, she, I don't know, she came for quite a few weekends. And one day she said, I brought friends. And I said, oh, <laughs> and she had some scratch marks on her skin. And it turned out that some deceased prisoners had been outraged. Maybe they, I think they might've hated women or something, but it, I realized that after the whole thing, it took like three hours of me going into trance and connecting with them. And the angels had me talk to them to negotiate with them. And it took me a while to realize they actually saw me. And for example, one said, who are you? And I said, I'm a friend. What do you want? And I, you know, said, oh, I'm here to help you. And you're stuck and you need to go up to the light. And he said, lady, I'm going down. And I said, oh, and I thought, okay, I think on my feet here. I said, well, you know, you've heard a lot of people. And he said, yes, I have. And I said, well, if you hurt people, then somebody must have hurt you. And, and this one gentleman said, he told me the story and his mother had been an alcohol dependent person and she broken a beer bottle and slashed his face. And it, as an adult, he became a slasher and he was acting out. And he told me that story. And so, and the angels just let me negotiate on my own. I hoped I was doing okay. And I felt so much love for this man and sorrow. And I started to cry. And I think I was crying his tears. And he started to cry. I was crying. And then I said, if you look up, you'll see, I didn't know who would be his loved ones, but I said, you'll see your loved ones above you. The angels are there to pull you up. And he started crying because he did see someone he loved up there and he, and he, up he went. Another guy on another day, he had been a, a prisoner and he, it was his girlfriend that had killed him and he was madly in love with her and, and yet hated women. That's why he'd come through this female corrections officer. And so that was a really sad, tragic tale. And once the story was out, once the tears were cried, he found a way up. And so I think Robert M Monroe talked about how there's this noise all around the earth of all these souls that are stuck. Well, I've encountered a lot of them and the angels will use us because we're humans are a lower vibration, a lower frequency. Angels are so high in vibration. They can't reach all these stuck souls. So that's why they use humans and they'll train them directly. Or you can go to the Monroe Institute and take a course and learn to awaken, you know, tap on their shoulder, or catch their attention and help these maybe souls get back up. Maybe Elizabeth, that the soul, the trapped souls aren't able to perceive the angels if their frequency is so high. Yeah, that's true. The angels can see them all the time, yeah. even in yeah. the lower realms, you know, the dark realms. And what they see is a little light go off if that person sort of is has a lucid moment and they'll reach in and pull them out. Because they're um, totally asleep, right? They're totally caught in a loop. This, this I did a little exactly. bit as well. Soul retrieval. I got a couple of books by this guy called Bruce Moen, who was also a Monroe Institute um yeah, he was from that. He was from that kind of group, you know, a couple of years later from Bob. And he wrote a whole series of books. And I did a little bit of it where I would go out and I would find these people who are stuck. You know, I remember going into this old house one time. There was a lady there and she didn't know she was dead and she was scruffy and filthy. And I just explained to her what happened. And I was like, would you like to move on to somewhere better where your family are? And I was able to do that. And I did it a couple of times. Not a lot. Um, it was quite interesting. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess just so many of them, you could just spend your entire life saving souls, right? Yes. And, and 
I'm so grateful because some of my clients are open to that. Like if I'm channeling, the angels will say quite often now, if the clients are interested, we're healing through you to other people. Sometimes those other people are stuck souls and sometimes they're in the physical yeah. world and they connect, they're connected through emotions and experiences. So the angels can reach through us to the people that have a similar vibration have had a similar experience, but they're stuck and, and they'll clear it. It's really interesting. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. Yeah. At one it's time though, I have to admit one time I was channeling and it was another stuck soul and a terrible story, a really sad story. And I suddenly felt bored out of my mind and I panicked. I thought, Oh no. And I went up to the angels and I said, is like, help me out here because I'm bored out of my mind. It's, this is becoming tedious. And suddenly it got interesting again. <laughs> mm. And it's been interesting ever since. So yeah, we humans are very repetitive. And that's yeah. a lot of my work is very repetitive because it's the same emotion. It's the same, ow, 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 help, no. And of course, when I'm channeling those emotions and they're like orbs of energy, and there are words attached to those orbs. And so I have, and the angels push the orbs through me, really like sickly, yellow, green, ugly things. And they'll push these through me. They'll pull them out of the clients, push them through me. And then I'm channeling those experiences. And I'll quite often see them. Yeah. To release them. Yeah. It's every word is a release. Every word, every tear is a release. And I will... What makes it interesting for me and for the client, I think, is sometimes I will see those lifetimes. Sometimes I have to really work at it to see them. It's worth it. Because <laughs> it, it, really, it really is fascinating because the gentleman who turned up for me, he was he had suddenly died. And I knew him quite well. He was actually a relation of the family. And he suddenly just dropped dead, just out of the blue. And I actually went, it was a family member. I went into their house one day and it was like as if I could feel, I was like, oh, I say, you know, you've got something here, right? And she was like, yeah. And there was this sort of process of like, I would walk into these different spaces in the house and I would connect and I was getting the messages in vibrations. So if I would say, are you a female, right? And I would get the answer back if it was like a, a negative, the vibrations would stop. If I'd say, are you a male? They'd go crazy, right? And it was this sort of, I would keep asking all these questions until I eventually figured out who it was. And I was like, I looked at her and I was like, and then I, I don't want to say it because it's quite, if, you know, if anyone was ever listening, they, yeah, I don't think they'd appreciate it. But so from that moment on, that individual kept coming to me. They kept like, I would be sitting watching TV and I go, oh, you're here. I I call him by his name and, and I could connect to him for a while. And one one time he actually, I allowed him to sit into my body. So he sat in and I took my phone out and I put it on the side of the, the, the windowsill and I started asking him questions and he was like moving my head and yes and no. And it, it was pretty, pretty interesting. I asked him, did he have any messages that he would like me to pass on to family that he had left, right? Close family. And he did. He gave me some really like personal messages, but I was actually, I actually didn't know how to approach his wife. I was like, I really don't know if she's going to appreciate me going, your husband has turned up and he's given you this message. And so I chose not to just because I just sensed that it wasn't the right thing to do. But eventually I called out to him one day and he was just gone. He just wasn't there anymore. He just, he had decided, moved on. That's beautiful. So you helped him. It's always quite shocking, isn't it? It's quite surprising when you realize this is real. <laughs> oh, this oh, is real. Oh, it was real. It was real. And and he told me that he, he was staying around for children you know that who were around the house and he, he was scared and didn't know what happened and he was that was what was keeping him here just seeing the kids so it was quite interesting oh gosh yeah the, there have been a lot of situations that I've experienced like that a, a very dear friend of mine called one time <clears throat> we were just chatting and then she said do you mind just channeling because a, a cousin of mine passed away and I 
so I went into trance and I don't remember all the messages because they don't really stay in my head, but I do remember yeah. this one. I didn't want to die today. And I opened my eyes. I said, when did he die? She said, oh, today. I was like, oh, I was shocked. I don't know why that shocked me. I just assumed it was somebody, you know, yeah. weeks, months, whatever ago. But I, uh, man, that one got me. It was so sad. He was, he yeah. didn't expect to die. And I was channeling it. It was right there. And I, my heart goes out to everybody who loses a loved one, but also to the ones that didn't intend to leave. And they're just like, what? No, I'm not ready yet. No. Ah, so many of us, you know, have accidents, um, stuff happens, and then suddenly yes. we're on the other side. It's, it's yeah, just um, hard to um, deal with. And what happens to them, Elizabeth? Like, because I, I had a, an individual, I had a, a very interesting gentleman on last week who he's, he calls himself a, a Malkisiadek being. And he works quite kind of similar to, to, to you. He, he works with these Malkisiadek angels as well. But we were talking a lot about, you know, people dying and not known they've died or maybe they're in a hospital bed and all of a sudden they can get up and they can move about but they don't know they've died. Has that been your experience as well? Yeah, well, it's usually, for me, for some reason, it, it's not that, well, they don't realize they've died and are stuck because they're stuck in a rage or they're stuck in a trauma or there's, like you said, like a loop and they just keep, yeah. you know, replaying that loop, whatever that is or whatever it was. I have I I haven't done oh, that's not true. Yeah, there's been a few people that were in they weren't quite they weren't dead yet, but they were on their deathbed. I was taken to a few deathbeds over the years. I was one in one case, a very prominent person, and and his wife had asked me to channel. When I was visiting another country, my clients brought me to this person and her husband was letting go. He was very ill and she was beside herself because he was such an accomplished person, so gifted and very well recognized. And so I channeled and he came through and he was lying in the next room, but he came through and he explained to her, look, it's always been about me. It's your time to shine. It's your time to rise and shine. I'll be waiting on the other side for you. And so he wasn't stuck. He was just very present. It was an agreement they had that she didn't know about, but he was in the spirit, like one foot in the spirit world, one foot not. So that was very interesting. And he died about a week later and he came to me. And I was so grateful because he let me know that he had passed and asked me to deliver a final message, which I did. So I have, it's an opera. One thing we have is an opportunity to console people and to help them understand that life is a gift, but it's, it's just another step along the way. It's a journey. We're here to learn it's school and we can keep going from here to get to the next level, whatever that is. And it just keeps going and going. This is, the world is just temporary. It's so fleeting. So yeah. enjoy it. And I guess this is quite a controversial one as well, right? It's that a lot of people, they imagine that when they pass, that there's going to be loved ones on waiting on the other side. And I know there's one, one person in particular who says, no, that's not the case. It's the larger consciousness system, you know, kind of playing them parts, right, to, to make you feel more comfortable. But, right, I also had an experience where I was shown where I reside when I'm not in a body, right? In between lives, when I'm not in a human form, right? And it was explained to me that while I'm there, a lifetime here, which could be 80 something years, only feels like 20 minutes there, right? So, I mean, so if people did pass on, right? Say you had a couple, you know, one of them passed on and 
that being could easily wait around, right? If it's only 20 oh, minutes yes. or 10 minutes, like, I mean, why wouldn't they not turn up to be there for the person? Yeah. Well, absolutely. So, so I've had a lot of that with twin flames, for example, where I had two clients come for different channeling sessions and they wound up going into trance. And I think I, yeah, they had past lives together and then they had past lives where they weren't together. One would have their life while the other one waited. And I also have a, I'm aware of a twin flame and he would wait until I did my lifetime. He was in the astral plane or the whatever, whatever the in-between waiting. And I've had that happen with so many clients, you know, you regress them through hypnosis or through a meditative thing, or they just fall into it. They're given the experience by the angels for their higher learning. So they understand. And so many loved ones are waiting on the other side. And they're also like our cheerleaders. They're <laughs> like my dad <laughs> has shown up a few times. He scrawled in messages to me. When I was waking up, I saw, you know, wear sunscreen. I'm like, what? And then he said, my sister won't be there. And I thought, oh, what's going to happen to my sister? But what he meant was, she's not going to be here because she's thousands of miles away. And she got really busy. There was no way she could come here to do what I'm going to be doing. And and other times he he said, show, I had a kind of a dream. And then, and then I was waking up about him. And then I woke up and as I was waking up I saw again his he he always wrote in large caps and I see scrawled in front of me you're the boss now and that's was about my mother descending into Alzheimer's he he's warned me before that happened yeah dad's come through a few times to let me know very simple instructions not very often but important and I didn't always understand them until later then I went, oh okay now I get it uh, and sometimes he just appeared, just looking at me, me looking at him, he's looking at me. And then my uncle comes and stands beside him and they're both looking at me. And I'm like, oh, well, Harry's here. Okay. Got a lot of uncles and it's pretty amazing. And then nothing, you know, for years, nothing. And then an aunt came through one time. Said, oh, hello. So they're kicking around and they're looking after everybody. And they too are on a spiritual path. So some of them are learning to be guides. Well, you know, they might be your guide, like they, your aunt, uncle, mother, father, sister, brother could be your guide. You just don't know it until you see them looking over you, watching over mm. you. Yeah, there's a lot of loved ones kicking around. Very interesting. I, I recently did a QHHT session. Have you ever heard of that? Sounds familiar. It's the, what, what is... it's the Loris Cannon. The Loris Cannon. It's like a oh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It, it's like a, a regression into a past life, and then they connect you to um your higher self, and then your higher self um comes in and tells you where you are on your life journey and your path and stuff like that. But that was that was quite interesting as well. Is that something that you can do as well? Connect it to someone's higher self for them? Yeah. Uh, that's hypnosis. Dolores Cannon okay. was a hypnotist. Yes. And yeah. so that's another. So in my case, I would take the client into a deep meditated state in order for them to go up to the life between lifetimes. And that helps them understand what they did before they entered this lifetime, how they're doing. It's like a, an evaluation. How am I doing? What do I need to do? Am I on track? And then they can also visit their previous lifetimes. But also there's something called the Council of Elders. And I found myself there many times, not expecting to find myself. Just I went there one time and it wasn't until I, I found myself there in 2001. I didn't understand it. <laughs> I was surrounded again on this round platform. The higher self, I've seen my higher self. Um, I was shown my higher self once, only once. And she, me, didn't have a lot to say. So that was interesting. I found most of the guidance has come from the Council of Ed Elders, God, Christ, and different high angels, archangels, and angels. I think the seraphim are the high angels. The 
high intro, high angels introduced themselves after I'd seen the angels and the arch a few archangels. They said, "We are the high angels on high beside we we sit on higher. We are on high beside God. We stand beside God. Something like that." And my friend said, "Oh, that's, that's the seraphim." And I guess that probably is, but they never call themselves a seraphim, just the high angels. But yes, you can connect to your higher self and. If you do connect with your higher self, that's a great connection because that can't be tampered with, right? Mm, yeah. As a channel, we have to learn to heal and become really clear. So, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry can't jump in and do what they want because yeah. we're open channels. Yeah. So it takes a lot of work to go up to the light. So nobody can uh, jump in and out of your channel. Whereas your higher self, no one can jump in and out of your connection to your higher self. So it's a yeah. really good connection. Yeah. And it, it, you can get there funny. with hypnosis. It's funny, Elizabeth, because my higher self was a bit similar. Like, didn't have a lot to say and was a bit of a smart arse. Like, it was like very matter of <laughs> fact. Don't ask this question. That's silly. He knows exactly what he's doing. Don't waste your time asking him that. You know, this kind of, I was like, God, you're a bit rude, girl. You know, it was like, and the woman doing it, she was laughing as well. She was like, yeah, kind of, he knows what he wants. So very interesting. I guess also, can I ask you a little bit about what your work at the moment, Elizabeth, and how people can connect with you and what you have on offer? Like, Because obviously I know you do a lot of one-to-one -one sessions. Do you do any group stuff as well or anything like that for people? I am... Um... Looking at doing that, I, I do that through Michael Sheridan's courses. I channel for his groups when they're learning channeling. And and I've done a few with Mia, but I'm looking at starting my own group. I just have to figure out the technology. And I've had a few very kind offers to help me out with that. So we'll see. But in the yeah. meantime, it's all one-on-one. -on -one and... Yep. I enjoy that quite a bit because I get to know people. You have a wonderful group of people that you work with. I, I people that come from I your sense group are just so many people fantastic. to you. I I really do. Just I yeah. I really appreciate your work, and I've sent so many people, and so many people have come back, and they've been blown away by the messages and the healings that they get. So I'm very happy to continue sending people to you. Yeah, so I'm very happy. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll link to all of your website and how they can book sessions with you. And your book is there as well in the background, The Diamond Lantern. And you did an audio book as well. So if anyone. Yeah, it's on audio. What is Audible. It's on Audible. Audible. Yeah. yeah. Trevor Hamlet helped me with that one. And oh, yeah, I, good, I know. Good old I, Trevor. Uh, he, he's a great help, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Just a wonderful man. And because it's my voice, I think you told me, yeah, you told me that people the keep healing. getting the energy yeah. the, from my vocal cords. The angel said that would happen, but all kinds of clients are reporting that they get the energy from the vocal cords. Of course. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you can listen to that and get angelic energies coming into you and raising your vibration. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And and with even with the recording of this, them them short little channelings you did, there's there's a transmission in them that people can benefit from, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if everyone just anyone just tunes in and just relaxes and listens, you don't even have to focus on the words. It's more about the energy coming through. And as you can see from my movements, the energy is like, like so powerful now. I'm like, <laughs> it's crazy powerful now. I Have you found that, Gareth? Like the energy is so much stronger Energies now. Energies have, have ramped up so much recently. Yeah, and hopefully it keeps continuing because it's amazing. Amazing times that we live in. Yeah. I know. I, I One wonders. The, the angels keep saying, Christ keeps saying, worry not fear not fear nothing and just be a high vibration in the world and that is lifting everybody up it's important in this time of expansion to be at a peaceful state to be of love 
because it's all about vibrational frequencies. It's all about emotions. And so we're bringing this higher energy in. We're, we're tuning in. We're channeling it in. And the angels are pushing it through to us. And so that's really important. I think people don't understand every emotion has an impact. Every emotion has an impact. So why not make it a good impact? Train yourself, heal yourself, do whatever you can to feel good, to feel peaceful yeah. and let go of all that negativity. It, it's so yeah. important. And it's it's great because a lot of the viewers and the people listening to this podcast, I mean, they're like, the the perfect people like anyone that i put in front of them they're all over it right they're doing the work they're healing they're you know they want to to enlighten themselves so the perfect audience and i hope the right people will listen to this and and come across your work as well so yeah i guess i guess that's the yeah we've come to the end amazing okay. it's been a great really amazing elizabeth thank you so much really appreciate it yeah anything to add to that before we go just love and gratitude, Gareth, for doing all the amazing work you. you're doing. Like so much love coming to you and to everybody, everybody, just so much love and appreciation for everything that you're doing to heal yourself and heal the world. Just love and gratitude. Elizabeth, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for tuning in. And I hope you yeah, connect with Elizabeth and yeah, follow her work. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Elizabeth. Bye. Thank you, Gary.